In today's video, we're gonna be walking you through how to install a full home mini split ceiling cassette system. This is a super efficient 21 sear system for ceiling cassettes. And we're basically replacing our whole ducted system with this system. There are so many advantages to going with a ceiling cassette mini split system. Number one is efficiency. Number two, you have independent controls for each room, which is awesome. We can keep our master bedroom at like 60 degrees in the middle of summer, no problem. We've been using this for about a month now and it works awesome. Number three, you can get federal rebates up to $2,000 when you convert to a heat pump system. So that's another huge advantage. The final advantage is that you don't have to have real estate for duct work. If you're doing a finished basement, you can suck these up into a 16 inch center joist and you don't have to have duct work and it makes this a true breeze. So let's get right into the install and show you how easy this process really was. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So this is what we're working with today. We are going to bring the condenser up here on the roof. That's our goal for the day. So if you haven't seen my ladder crane, it's awesome. I'm about to pull it out, so stay tuned for that. So we have our condenser here. This condenser probably weighs a couple hundred pounds. A really nice unit, basically the same as the one in our garage, but this is a larger unit. And as you can see, it's a four zone. So we have eight separate connections here and all of these are no loss, pre-charged DIY type of valve. So there's no vacuum needed on this system, which makes it super awesome. So we're gonna put two straps around the front and maybe one this way. I think two this way should be sufficient. And then we're gonna loop them together and pull it straight up. So let's get it strapped up, get our ladder crane set up up here and we'll show you what we got then. All right, so for those of you that haven't seen this, this is my homemade ladder crane. This is a much far superior one than any one you'll find on the market. They have some where you have to plug them into an outlet, which is hard to come by sometimes on certain roofs, especially residential roofs. So this is a M18 powered. So we have a converter that goes from 12 volts to 18 volts, being as this winch runs off of 12 volts. This is a 2000 pound winch, so far superior or over capacity for what anything that will need. And then you have simple controls. So if we wanna go down with it, just press that button and it'll retract the cable. And then up is this button here. And that's pretty much it. So I made this all out of quarter inch aluminum and uh, it's really overbuilt, but it works awesome and it saves so much time. All right, guys, so we successfully got our condenser up here from over there. And you'll notice because of the slanted roof here, this unit is not level by any stretch. Initially, I was gonna put wall brackets right here, but because I don't have quite enough length for that wall bracket, I think what I'm gonna do is build some shims and I'm just going to secure this with silicone to the roof. Um, and being as it's protected here, it's in a really good location. So it's not gonna get a bunch of snow build up under this eave. And I think this is gonna be a great spot. So we're gonna build some little triangle shims. As you can see, these feet, I don't know if you can see that or not, but they go all the way across on the bottom side. So we're just gonna build our platform a little bit wider, probably maybe the width of a two by four, and then build our shim and make sure that it's nice and level. And then we'll move on to the next phase. Now my plan is here, since all of our lines are right here, we're just gonna go straight in to the wall with a big hole here. And then I'll show you my attic. We've got tons of room here. So the first head is gonna be over there in that corner. The second head will be over there in that corner. And then we'll have one close to here and then another one there. So the head units I think are gonna be a breeze 
compared to what we just went through <laughs> getting this here. But this is gonna be a really good spot out of the way for this condenser. All right, so we're inside the house. We're gonna show you exactly where these head units are gonna go. And we're gonna start from the very basics with a finished ceiling and show you what to expect. Okay, so this is our entryway here. And this is where unit one is going to go. And then over here on the other side of this space, we're probably gonna have another unit here, but I'm actually gonna install this one first and we're gonna test it out and see if it'll efficiently cool this space. We might end up with a three zone, which is totally fine. A lot of these systems are compatible with four zones, but they only come with three heads. And so we might go that route. The third unit or possibly the second will go here in the master bedroom. And then the fourth will go in the spare bedroom, which we'll show you. So this is what we're gonna start with is this head unit here. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and measure, as you can see, the ceiling hole needs to be 16.9 inches width and 51.2 in length. So those are the total rough dimensions. So what I'm gonna do is poke a hole and see how much distance we have left and right because my trusses run this way. And then we'll make our determination on the exact hole. Then we're gonna clean the insulation out from up there, make our hole and put this unit in place. So a cool thing about this unit is you can run it without having all of the heads attached. Now, the rule behind that is you wanna have half of what the capacity for the condenser is. So in my instance, it's a 36,000 BTU condenser. We can run two 9,000 BTU heads and be totally fine. Simultaneously, we can be working on the other heads, but they just want you to have at least half of the capacity worth of head units installed, and then you can run the system. Now, something that's gonna make this job really easy is this guy right here. This is called a stud finder, and basically all it is is a rare earth magnet, and you can hold it up on the ceiling or on walls, and it'll stick to the screws, tell you where those studs are. So let's show you how this works, and we can dial in exactly where this head unit's gonna go. I just realized that the other part of my house over there is a 24 inch center, but this is actually 16. And the way that I found that out is I can see there's a screw here, and if I go over, uh, 16 inches, there's one here. So this is actually perfect. I'm actually really excited about this because this will work perfectly. And just for reference, on a 16 inch on center, you're gonna have about 14 inch spacing in between. So this will fit perfectly right in between the studs. So that being said, we have our perfect opening right here. We're simply gonna center it, mark it out, and then we can vacuum or move aside the insulation up there and then we can cut our hole. All right, so we have everything measured out. This is our rough sketch. Something that I was kind of struggling with is basically it's 17 inches this way. Make it exactly 17 inches because when you look at the actual unit here, it's close to 18, I think, 18 and a half, but you don't want it, your cut edge to be super close to this. You want it in as much as possible. And no matter what, as long as you have stud to hit, you're golden. So just make this 17 and I made this 51 inches wide and I'm sure that'll be totally fine. So we're gonna clear this off in the attic, cut our hole with dust extraction or vacuum, and then we're gonna go ahead and set the unit in place. All right, so this is our section. As you can see, we just drilled with a long drill bit through the ceiling so we knew which area to clear out. We swept all of this. We're gonna start sawing from the bottom side and our saw marks are gonna be on the outside edge of these studs, hopefully, and then we should be good to go. So hopefully we don't make too big of a mess here, but we'll get started and start making our cuts. So as you can see here, when we first started, we were using a jigsaw and I quickly found that this was just gonna take forever. So I swapped over to a mini Sawzall and just used one hand to vacuum up the debris as I was going along. It still made a little bit of debris and there was a little bit of dust, but not too bad. And this particular area, there was two layers. I guess they just put drywall over this. So it took a while to remove all of this and especially to clean the edges. But what I did was went through and just cut all the screw heads off with this Sawzall and made a nice clean opening to uh, accept our new head. All right, so everything is cleaned up. Our square is nice and perfect. I'm gonna hold this up there and make sure that it fits good. And then what we're gonna do is drill some holes and then put our lag bolts in. Now, one thing to note as you do this install is on the electrical breaker side, you want about an inch between the edge of your hole and the electrical box. 
On this first one, I made that mistake and the cover actually didn't fit. So I had to move it over to the right an inch. So just keep that in mind when you're hanging the head unit. All right, guys. So we have all of our screws in. Now for my particular application, this was a bit of a hassle because we had two layers of sheetrock. So I actually had to put a little shim here because they specify that this needs to be five eighths from the, the flush surface in order for the screws for this next piece to go in. So being as I have a lot of heat coming in from the attic, I'm gonna go ahead and permanently install the face plate. Once we do that, we're gonna take this off and make our electrical connections from the base plate to this and everything else will be done up in the attic. The lines will do the leak check and everything up in the attic. Now, one thing to note is that these louvers, this will only blow one way. So this is not gonna be blowing that way. So rotate this accordingly how you want the air to blow. Whatever this side is for the vents, that's the way that the air is gonna travel. And obviously it will come down, so it'll be like, down and this way, but not back that other way. So the next thing we're gonna do is permanently mount our piece here. And then I'm gonna use a magic eraser to clean this up as much as possible. It's a matte finish, so my fingerprints got all over the ceiling. So this is our finished panel that we're gonna be putting up next. And you'll notice on the back side we have two little clips right here. This will temporarily clip them in place. Once we have it clipped in and we have our hands free, we'll put the actual permanent mounting screws in. So these clips right here will attach to these two right here. So we're simply gonna line those up and pop it into place. So both sides locked in, that will stay by itself. We're gonna get the mounting screws and get this permanently mounted. All right, so here's where we're at. So these screws that have the fine threads, they are going to go in this slot and this one, and there's one right here under this panel. It's the same as this one, it just pops down. So you actually have access to your lines or your drain if you ever need to access that in the future. And then this is the only one that goes into plastic. So it has the more coarse threads. That's the only one that looks different than these. Now, over here, we also have, I believe one right here. That's gonna be one of these machine screws and I think one on the other side. So this will be nice and flush when that's finished. All right, so I got those in. What we're gonna move on to is our electrical connections here. And I wanted to show you how awesome the magic eraser is. You can see all this junk here. Look how easy it is. Sometimes with these satin finish ceilings, stuff even with a microfiber rag just does not wanna come off. But these things are amazing. Look how easy it took that off. I hit my sawzall on this. I'm gonna have to touch up a few spots, but no problem. Everything is nice and flush all the way down. So next let's move on to this part and then we can button this up. Okay, so next what we did is removed this screw here on the left and this one on the right. And this piece will pop off. And then we're going to connect all of these wires to our main control board here. They're color coded, so you can't really mess it up. Okay, so everything is connected here. So this top one here is the one with all of the pins. As you can see right here on the top left, it says 10 core display panel white. So we just kind of coordinate all of these with this. So if you look at the very top one, it's an air deflector louver white five core. That is this one right here. And then the one right below it is this guy, white four core. And the last one is this guy, which is red, and that's a five core, and it's right below that long one, which is right here. So nothing connects to this one with all those pins. So the next thing we're gonna do is install our electrical wiring that comes with this kit. In the box, it comes right underneath the head unit. And we're gonna install three wires here, and then our ground here. Now, something to note is that this is much, much easier than trying to knock one of these knockouts out while it's up. I actually broke this breaker trying to hit this knockout to get it to pop out. It actually broke the tab on the backside, but when you put this cover back over, it kind of holds the breaker in place to make sure that it doesn't move, so it's totally fine. But I would definitely use these instead of trying to knock it out. So we're gonna punch a 7 8 hole here. That's the size we need for a half inch knockout for whatever reason. 
So we'll go up in the attic, drill that out, and we'll show you how to make this connection here. Um, it's very straightforward. You just line the numbers up three to three, two to two, one to one, and green to ground. All right, so we're up here in the attic. We just got this drilled. Um, as you can see, this is a one inch hole, I believe. The only half inch one is on the side and I can't access it. You could also just go where there's no knockout. Either way, this also comes with this adapter for that reason. So once we take this off, this plate will go over the top of that hole to make up for any of that there. And then we'll put the nut on the back side. All right, so this head unit is completely done. Once this is powered up, we'll then suck this in. So our next unit is gonna go right here. As you can see, I've put in the pilot bit. I actually hit a stud right here. So I think it's gonna be perfect in this bay right here. Now we did several different approaches with this. Uh, this one we cut from the attic and we just had uh, Terry here holding the vacuum. Uh, this aspect of it was a lot less messy because we were able to just suck up the debris. Um, but as you can see, this was lath and plaster. So what they do is they use little cedar planks and then they put a compound over that and so I had to just pull this off little bit by bit and it took a while, but it still was not too messy. I mean, it wasn't too bad. And we ended up with a cleaner box right out of the gate and we didn't have to cut as much. Now here on unit number three, this was definitely the easiest because this section was a 24 inch center. So we just cut our square uh, 17 by 51 and then as soon as we were done cutting this out, we just literally removed this box as one piece and just brought it outside. Then it was as simple as framing in our new 16 inch center box. And then we were able to accept the new head unit with that new framing. All right, so we're up in the attic here and we have unit number one. This is the master bedroom unit and unit two. So we're getting the line sets unspooled, all of the electrical, for both of these are connected and we're just routing them up and uh, attaching them to the trusses here just to make sure they're not just hanging out on the floor. Next, we're going to unspool our lines and show you how easy those are to connect. And simultaneously, we're doing the PVC and we'll show you on this one how we have it laid out. In the install guide, it says each of these has a pump, so we have to go up no more than 20 inches. That way when it pumps this water out, it doesn't have any possibility of coming back into the unit. So as you can see, we have the P-trap there and then we're gonna route that straight. And then our next unit will go up, loop into the main drain. And that's gonna go down through this uh, old chimney down into our condensate pump. So we're getting this first one done. And next we're gonna get our line set connected and this head will be completely finished. All right guys, so we have our hole cut. This is a three inch hole. We have our quick connect lines there and we're just gonna get our wiring hooked up. So we have our two liquid tight armor flex or MC cable that's rated for exterior. So number A is gonna go to the living room, B is gonna go to the master. And then once we have these two heads hooked up, we can power on the system and simultaneously get the rest of them hooked up. Pretty self-explanatory. A will have one, two, and three. So we'll just match that with the wiring. And as you can see, all of the wiring here is labeled. I don't know if you can see that, but number one is red, three is black, and two is white. And then of course, green to ground. So we're gonna get those all attached and buttoned up. And I'm gonna have Terry do that while I am finishing up the line set on that second unit there. So I just wanna show you on one of these how easy the DIY line set really is. So we just threaded this one on. I'm gonna go ahead and thread on our blue line here. And these can only go on one way, so you can't really mess it up, which is another advantage. And they specifically say, don't take these off until you're immediately ready to install them because you don't want anything getting on these O-rings and possibly causing a leak. We're just gonna line this up here. Make sure the threads do not cross thread, that they start easily. Get them started until you feel a little bit of resistance and then stop. And you're gonna use your adjustable after this. So you're gonna hold on to this fitting, either one of these, preferably the closer one, and then you'll just start 
threading these on here. Now these don't have to be crazy tight. I recommend just doing this by feel because a lot of people aren't gonna have an adjustable torque wrench. So you basically go until it touches the next fitting over and then you're just gonna snug it after that. That's it. Now let's do the same thing over here. Just snug this one up. Perfect. All right, so that one is done. All right, so all of our lines, at least these two lines are open right now. We can totally run the system with just these open. So the last step after connecting the lines, uh, the DIY line set, is we're going to completely open up these two king valves and we're gonna open up each valve that the pre-charged lines are connected to. So for us, these four, and then when we get the other two heads connected, we'll open these four and then we can run those. All right, ladies and gentlemen, our system is running, pulling tons of heat out. All of these suction lines are just super cold. So we're gonna spray everything down. In the instructions, it says to spray them down as soon as you make the connections and then once you start it, but I'm just doing this after it's started. So I'm using this micro gas leak detector. It's really thick. I like it better than soapy bubbles. So we're just gonna spray it right on these joints, all of them actually, even where they connect to the service valve here, and just make sure we see zero bubbles. I'm not seeing any leaks, so I think we're golden here. We're gonna check each head unit and just confirm. I don't see any bubbles anywhere. And then once we've confirmed all of that, we're gonna go ahead and get all of these wrapped. So they're, they're wrapped all the way up to the service port here. And then everything inside needs to be wrapped completely to where there's absolutely no exposed metal. Out here, it doesn't matter if it gets on the roof and leaks off, it's not a big deal. But in an attic, it's definitely a big deal and you don't wanna flood your house. All right, guys, so there's our finished unit. Beautiful, I can't even hear it here down on the ground level. And even up there, we can hardly hear it. As you can see, it's currently 88 degrees with a high of 93. So let's check it out up there and show you what we got. So here's our unit running and check out what our decibels are. 54 decibels. Basically just sounds like a fan out here running, pulling tons of heat. And here is our finished product. Basically after the first head, we just duplicated what we did there. So we have all of our lines connected here. Again, that was a super easy process. We just used two adjustable wrenches and that's it. Nothing special needed. And then we have our weatherproof MC cable that's special to this unit. So that made it really easy. And then of course our main whip to our disconnect there. Now inside, I still have a little bit of cleaning up to do here. As you can see, head number one is right here. There's a bunch of junk around it, but this is the one we had to frame in. And then you'll notice on all of these drains, we came straight up with an elbow and then they slope down to this central drain right here. Same with that unit over there. It comes up about 12, 13 inches and then it slowly slopes down until it comes into here. And the whole idea is that if this system pumps water out, we don't want that going back into that unit or into these two units over here. So let's show you these other two as well. And the beauty of this is you don't have to have exactly the right line set. You can just spool this up in the attic and as long as it's insulated, um, it's totally fine. And then as you can see here, we have our drain coming out and same thing, just going over to the central drain there. And we have everything insulated. Right underneath these we did, there's some sound deadening material that you wrap first, and then the insulation goes over that, and then you just tape it and make sure everything is um, sealed up. And that's pretty much it. So that's unit one there, unit two, unit three, and unit four. And everything is up in the attic. Another thing to note is that these units have a float switch inside. So for whatever reason, this stops pumping, you're gonna get alerted, the system's gonna shut down and that's a great safety feature. You don't have to worry about this thing flooding, you know, your attic or your ceiling. So that is pretty much it. Really happy with this. Let's go inside and check out the head units um, all finished up. And one last thing we're gonna do is seal this off with silicone just to make sure nothing gets inside of the attic. But that's pretty much the last thing. Everything is level here and working beautifully. Now, as you recall, we had our AC unit right here. We still have the hole there in the foundation and we had our whip going up here to our box, but I wanted to move that so this area is completely free 
and we went ahead and did a new concrete slab here. So everything's gonna be nice. We're gonna patch all of that. So we basically just ran new power and it runs up here into the soffit. I hired an electrician to do this aspect of it. Alternatively, he said we could have taken conduit and went around, but I thought this would look a lot nicer. But if you're mechanically inclined, you could totally run this yourself, run it on the outside and achieve the same thing. Now, alternatively, if you wanted to leave your condenser here, you could just run the line sets up and around and that would suffice as well. But I wanted everything to be up there so I didn't have to worry about it. All right, so inside here, this is unit number one. This is completely done. This one is actually off. The space is really doing well right now. It's 66 degrees in here. And as you can see on this head unit, this one is running currently. And as you can see, we're blowing 50 degree air out. Super quiet and it only sticks out past the flush surface about three quarters of an inch. So it's not like it's sticking down super far. And uh, so far it's been doing really well. And then in here, in the master, we have the same unit running here, super quiet and everything is working beautifully. So you might be wondering how hard is it to change the filters being as it's up on the ceiling. So I'm gonna show you how easy that is to do. So we're gonna press the on button and then immediately the mode and down button. And then this should change to F2. As you can see, we see F2. So we're gonna press down and that's gonna start lowering down the grill. Now this will lower down clear to probably four feet off the ground. So it makes it really easy to change or to pull this grill out, rinse it off, put it back, and it's as easy as that. All right, so now that this is down, all we do is lift up on the screen like so, slide it out. You can then hose it down, let it dry for a few minutes, and then it's as simple as putting it back and it should pop right back into those grooves just like that. And then we're simply gonna press the up button and then it will start raising this up slowly. And then it sucks up flush just like that and it's good to go. Now, as far as pairing these units with your app, it's extremely easy to do. So all you do is pop this side down and then under this cover, there's a little USB port right here. And the kit comes with a USB in a little box. You simply plug it in and it's important that you plug it in while you're pairing this unit because if you do it after the fact, it won't register. The USB that you put in here emits a Wi-Fi signal. You connect to that Wi-Fi and then this pairs to the unit really nicely. Now, as you notice here in the app, as soon as we pull it up, we have our garage, living room, master bedroom, kitchen, and spare. So we have all of these head units. Everything in my home is run by Mr. Cool, which I absolutely love, and it's all adjustable by my phone. So you notice that the kitchen and spare are both off. Now that's the beauty of this system is depending on where you're at in the home, those head units will actually cool spaces around them. But if you really wanna get a certain space cooled or heated, you can go ahead and bump it on or you could just leave it on all the time and have it at that set temperature. That's totally fine as well. Our home generally stays pretty cool. We have it insulated really well. And so these two units are off here. Now, one thing to note is that sometimes you'll notice that the Mr. Cool or a lot of mini splits will actually say it's warmer than it actually is. So it's actually 68 in the home, but the thing says it's 72 or something like that. So you'll notice if say we click the living room and we click the little gear icon here and click device preferences, we can actually calibrate that to make up for that offset. So we could bump this up by a few degrees so that the Mr. Cool will think it's actually cooler than it actually is um, in its brain. So it'll match what the temperature actually is. So that's a cool feature that uh, we have on the Mr. Cool. We can power it on and off with our smartphone. One other thing to note is that a lot of mini splits, if you leave it on cool mode, you'll notice that when it hits the desired temperature, the compressor will stop sending refrigerant to that coil and you'll get kind of a musty smell for about 30 seconds or so, and then it should clear up. Now, one thing I've found that can resolve this and avoid it, and I'm gonna do a separate dedicated video for this, is if you leave it in dry mode, a lot of people don't realize this, but dry mode is still in air conditioning and it will always emit cold air. It won't cycle on and off. It'll just emit less cool of air when the temperature is met. 
So I always leave everything in dry mode. You notice that all of these are set to dry and not cool, except for our garage. And that's for that reason, is that it will just stay in cooling and you won't have that musty smell. So keep that in mind um, if you're doing a system like this or any mini split, really. Now you'll notice here at the bottom, you can also set a schedule. If you want things to turn on and off at certain times, you can set a schedule for each head, which is really cool. So those are just some of the many features that are in the Mr. Cool app. The interface is really easy to use and I highly recommend everything about this system. I absolutely love it and I'm really excited. Now I'm not gonna lie, cutting holes in the ceiling was a bit messy. It was a little bit labor intensive, but if you're like other DIYers, you have time at your disposal. And the beauty about this, as we discussed, is that you can run a couple of heads and while the system is running and cooling your home, you can then work on the other heads, which is a huge advantage. So I was able to work in a conditioned space while working on the last two heads, and that made it a lot easier. But overall, this was a very simple project. There wasn't any specialty tools required. We just had a saw for cutting in the holes. We had to frame in a little bit, so an impact gun, two adjustables to connect the line sets, screwdriver to make the electrical connection. So it was really easy. And I think any DIYer can totally tackle this project and have an awesome system that is reliable, that's easy to use, and that's gonna keep your house comfortable. As always, you can find this product at HVACdirect.com and make sure to use this discount code right here to get 3% off of your order. Now, if you're interested in seeing a full solar mini split that runs off of the sun when the sun is out and automatically transfers over to a standard 110 outlet when the sun goes down or when it gets dark, check out this video right here. I'm sure you'll be really intrigued by the air spool solar mini split. Until next time, you guys be safe. Later.